So don't use it as a weapon. Don't bring it up in, in, a, in an argument because that could be very hurtful. I see. That's what you mean. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, next. <laughs> Everybody, this is Sam and Tiff, and welcome back to Life with Sam and Tiff. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to thank all of you for your comments and just your support on our last video, Long Distance Relationship Tips. Um, we wanted to do another relationship video, um, and our uh, topic for today is common relationship mistakes and how to avoid them. Please know that by no means are we experts. Uh, we've had some wise counsel from people that have mentored us over the years, and we've also gathered wisdom from books that mm-hmm. we've read together. And so we want to just share with you some tips that, that we really try to um, incorporate and practice in our own relationship. But we know that there's many of you that are, are uh, more experienced than we are, and we would love to hear comments down below as well. So we wanted to do this video to not only be helpful to you, but to remind ourselves that this is working for us and to continue to do them. Yeah, I definitely agree with Sam because every day we still commit mistakes and every day we try to understand each other more as we discover different characters Mm -hmm. that we actually have and we do not know. So these are our go-to wisdom. And just like what Sam said a while ago, we got this from reading and listening to people around us. So we hope that you will stay tuned with us, be with us along the way at the end of this um, vlog so that we could learn together. Mm -hmm. So we have a total of five tips for you. Tiffany's going to talk about two and I'm going to talk about two and we'll come together at the end Mm -hmm. and uh, we'll uh, finish it off. So do you want to start it? Yes, of course. So our very first uh, common relationship mistake is the tone. So if you're my friend, hello friends, they know me very well. I'm actually a person who's very frank, so I'm very upfront about my opinions and um, I don't talk in a very sweet way. (laughs) So this personally was a problem for me. It was not a problem for Sam because Sam talks in a very sweet way to me. So what we're trying to say is that the way you speak to each other matters. So if, for example, you have this argument or misunderstanding, your tone really matters. If you started um, the argument in an angry tone or an angry voice, most likely it will not end good. But if you started the conversation in a very calm and kind manner, most likely you will end up in a favorable result. So Sam has always been um, patient with me. Every time I forget that, he always tell me, honey, be kind (laughs) to me. Don't say it like that. And I will be reminded and I'll try to shift (laughs) as much as I can and realize that, yeah, that is wrong. Because if you notice um, in dramas, for example, when um, parents argue, they usually shout at each other mm. and always they end up making the uh, misunderstanding worse. They will really end up in a fight. Mm. So the tone really matters. It's very important. Your choice of words as much as possible. You try to stop, think, and try to organize your words before you talk to your significant other. Mm, that's a good point. Um, the next tip is throw all assumptions out the window. Now, uh, you know, when we assume we do one of two things, uh, we may uh, come up on top, right? Mm-hmm. And it may be right. Your assumptions may be right mm-hmm. and it serves you well, but it's when your assumptions are wrong and the risk is too high. So, for example, let's say. Tiffany calls me and um, uh, I don't answer, right? 
and she may assume that I'm angry at her, but I just simply may have missed a phone call, right? So when we assume something about someone, it's kind of like we're playing Professor X from the X Men, right?、Mm -hmm. We're pretending to read their minds, and、mm -hmm. none of us can read、mm -hmm. each other's minds.、Mm -hmm. So throw all assumptions out the window, and whether good or bad, you know, it's not a game. We can't eat, read each other's minds.、Um, speak clearly and、mm -hmm. try to find clarity in、um, what's really going on. The third one is about zombies.、So、zombies should stay dead.、Mm -hmm. A zombie is already dead, so you don't need and you don't want it to be back, to be alive or to bring back into your relationship. So just like a zombie, it's full of virus, and you don't want it to be the wedge between you and your partner.、Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that don't bring back. Past relationships, past mistakes, and past arguments. Am I correct?、Okay? Uh, well, I I think there is a time and place to talk about unresolved feelings, or you could talk about past relationships. But I think it's when you are in an argument, in a heated conversation,、mm -hmm. right? And you use that as a weapon. When you try to use the past as a weapon, I think that can be very hurtful. So if you have unresolved feelings or something that you want to talk about, I think it's best done when both of you are calm and maybe approach it like, "Honey, you know, I got something on my mind. Is this a good time to talk about that?" And because both of you are in a calmer state, it may be better received. So don't use it as a weapon. Don't bring it up in in a in an argument because that could be very hurtful. I see. That's what you mean. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is winning an argument is not always a win. Winning an argument is not always a win because you may win the argument, but you may lose your significant other. You may lose the person, and the person is far more important than winning an argument. You don't have to win every argument. You don't have to get your point across because the person matters far more than whatever that you're talking about. So I kind of feel like it's a matter of choosing your battles. You don't have to die on that hill, right? And there may be some. Uh, issues that you're very passionate about, but they're few and far between. So don't feel like you have to win every argument because the person matters far more than that. Yeah, I think what matters most is what's the problem, what's the root and cause of the problem. It's not about、um, like treating your partner as an enemy and making、mm. him or her feel bad. About what happened, but actually you need to work as a team,、yeah. try to resolve what is wrong, and not to prove that I'm right and you're wrong. Right, right. And the final one, do you want to mention the final one? Yeah, the final one is actually super important for the both of us, and actually whether you like it or not, or not, it's also very important to you because. You don't only marry the person; you marry the family, and it's a very crucial part of your relationship. Because whether you like it or not, that person is part of someone else's family, as you are. And they say a person is both nature or nurture. That even if you were not raised by your family, you have the blood of your family, and even if they didn't.、Um, Uh, molded you, but their attitude, their characters will still manifest in you because again, you are their blood, and you need to know the background of the family so that you'll understand more your partner. So just like for us, when I met Sam for the first time, I was with my mom. My mom was my chaperone, or my mom accompanied me.、Mm -hmm. So what have you realized about me when you saw my mom? Yeah, you, you definitely share characteristics,、um, but I think、uh, it was really great to get to know you with your mom because there's some、uh, things that I'll never get to know about you without understanding the family that you come from. And I really do agree with you that we're not raised in a vacuum; that you know we come from. 
two different families, our parents resolve conflict in two different ways, and whether we realize it or not, we absorb that, we, 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 and we bring that into our, our marriage, and so we kind of have to uh, really be intentional about being patient with each other, uh, working as a team, try to understand each other, and know that, okay, so you come from a family system and I come from a family system. But the important thing is, how will we make our own family patterns? How will we make our own choices and choose to work out problems together? Yeah, that's good. Going back to what I was saying a while ago, when I was also um, meeting Sam's family in Colorado just this year, that's when I realized, oh, this is why Sam is a cleaner person. <laughs> 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 it's because in their family they are really very attached to each other mm -hmm. and that's when also I realized oh that's why Sam speaks in a very <laughs> sweet tone because in their family that's how they speak to each other mm -hmm. and also I realized oh this is the reason why <laughs> Sam loves this way because um, his parents and his siblings treat Sam in that way like in a very sweet kind generous <laughs> way so that's why when I went and visited there I uh, concluded that you really know you really need to know the family of your partner so that you could understand him or her more and also in the future the family would really be part of the marriage mm -hmm. and also in times of difficulties it's also the family who we could trust and who we could ask for help and uh, it's good to have a good relationship with them as much as you can and um, we hope that though it's difficult sometimes I know there are in-laws that are really difficult but in terms of like observing them their patterns their ways their culture it's really helpful for you before um marrying your girlfriend or boyfriend mm -hmm. so that you could also have your own ways like um create your own technique so that you could go around with them or so that you could make your relationship with them better mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. well said yeah. <laughs> 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 so so that's it for us. Do you have anything else you want to say? I think I'd like to tell everyone that it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's okay that um, when you try our tips or the tips that you have learned, that it will not be applicable as soon as possible because it's a learning process. You need to be um, consistent with it, constant. Um, be willing also to learn and to change and be patient be forgiving when your spouse commit uh, commits mistakes because just like you you are also not perfect then your partner is also not perfect we are always bound to commit mistakes but what is important again that we work as a team anything you'd like to say no that's it are you sure yeah <laughs> okay I said everything <laughs> yes okay so we hope that you have learned from us and if you have any more uh, advice opinion that you'd like to share to us and to the other people watching this vlog you can comment below in the comment box or section i would like to see you again thank you for watching and subscribing we appreciate your comments we appreciate um your time in giving us uh, this chance to share our experience and I hope we could learn together and again this is always a process and thank you again for everything God bless you be safe and be happy mm. this is again Sam and Tiff see ya